Hello, everyone. I'm Laura Rogers, Director of the Office of Sex Offender Sentencing, Monitoring, Apprehending, Registering, and Tracking. Welcome to this webinar, which will provide guidance for the Adam Walsh Act Implementation Grant Program Solicitation Applications. As you may know, the Adam Walsh Act was enacted in 2006. Title I of the Act laid out the requirements of the Sex Offender Registration and Notification Act, or SORNA. We now have 17 implemented states, four territories, and over 130 tribes, with many of the remaining jurisdictions actively working towards implementation. As we continue to implement SORNA, we are moving towards maintaining SORNA requirements and best practices, as well as incorporating newer requirements, such as the 21-day international travel notice that International Megan's Law codified. We hope jurisdictions will use these Adam Walsh Act funds to increase and improve the maintenance and sustainability of your program, as well as training and support of local and regional and tribal efforts within your jurisdictions. Training those within your state, territory, or tribe is vital to information sharing and continued success of your sex offender registration and notification system. This year, we have expanded the Adam Walsh Act solicitation to include three purpose areas. In addition to Purpose Area 1, the SORNA jurisdictions, Purpose Area 2 is open to counties located in implemented states, and Purpose Area 3 is open to states and territories who want to implement SORT, the Sex Offender Registry Tool. Hi, this is Yaya Foz, the Senior Policy Advisor with the SMART Office. In this webinar, we will address the requirements of the Adam Walsh Act, or AWA, particularly Title I of the Adam Walsh Act, which is the Sex Offender Registration and Notification Act, or SORNA. We will discuss eligibility to apply for the AWA Implementation Grant, information about the award and its timeline, and the goals, objectives, and deliverables of the Adam Walsh Act Implementation Grant Program. We will also discuss the process of preparing an application for the grant. The SMART Office, through the AWA Implementation Grant and other activities, assists jurisdictions with developing and enhancing programs designed to implement the requirements of SORNA. SORNA sets forth a comprehensive set of standards for the registration and notification of convicted sex offenders. It revised prior federal laws on sex offender registration and notification, and in doing so, closed gaps and loopholes that existed under those laws. Under SORNA, jurisdictions are required to maintain a sex offender registration and notification system that captures each registrable offender who resides, works, or attends school in the jurisdiction. SORNA went beyond prior federal laws by expanding the number of sex offenses that must be captured by a registration jurisdiction. The goals, objectives, and deliverables of the AWA Implementation Grant center around achieving substantial implementation of SORNA, maintaining and enhancing SORNA implementation, and sustaining a SORNA-compliant registration and notification system. Hi, this is Amy. In fiscal year 2019, the SMART Office is looking to expand the AWA program uh, to provide support to counties and states that have substantially implemented SORNA in order to augment enforcement, compliance, and coordination, to encourage further implementation and integration of the Sex Offender Registry Tool, SORT, and to encourage program investments in economically distressed communities through qualified opportunity zones. This webinar will provide information for applicants interested in Purpose Area 3, support for implementation and integration of the Sex Offender Registry Tool. Each award will be up to $1 million for a period of 36 months. All of these awards will begin after October 1, 2019. Awardees will be notified by no later than September 30 of 2019. Please make note that applications are due April 18, 2019 by 11.59 p.m. Eligible applicants for Purpose Area 3 include the states, District of Columbia, and principal U.S. territories. 
a jurisdiction must be currently using SORT as its sex offender registry or must do so if selected for this award. Federally recognized tribes are not eligible for Purpose Area 3 as a separate registry software, TSORS, is made available to tribes. SORNA directs the Attorney General to develop registry management and website software to assist jurisdictions in fulfilling information sharing and community notification requirements. SMART developed and made SORT available to states and territories as well as the District of Columbia. SORT functions as the state-level administrative registry system, provides local registration agencies with their own customizable public sex offender registry website, enable jurisdictions to implement SORNA's information collection and sharing requirements, offers system customizations to meet jurisdiction needs, and maximizes efficiency and cost effectiveness of registry system setup and ongoing maintenance. SOAR is available to all jurisdictions at no cost. There are no maintenance fees, no licensing fees, and no requirement to apply for this AWA grant to receive SOAR. Purpose Area 3 of this AWA grant covers the integration and implementation costs that may be associated with adopting SORT as a jurisdiction's registry system. Associated costs. As stated, although SORT is available at no cost, integrating SORT into a jurisdiction's existing registry system may have associated costs that can include data migration, which depending on the size of the jurisdiction's registry may prove to be expensive. Purpose Area 3 would cover the expenses associated with data migration, whether it be the cost of personnel, in-house or subcontractor, or other software applications needed to complete the task. Associated costs may also include integration costs. Oftentimes, there are a number of different applications that are integrated into a jurisdiction's registry system that will need to be reconfigured when acquiring a new registry software. Message Switch Systems and NCIC, a jurisdiction may be using an information broker message switch system to access NCIC that will require an add-on or an associated fee in order for it to be configured to sort. Purpose Area 3 would cover these costs. Integration with live scans. Similarly, a jurisdiction may have live scans currently integrated into its registry database in order to maintain registered offender prints. The particular live scan being utilized by a jurisdiction may require certain configurations and or customizations in order to interface with SORT. Purpose Area 3 would cover these costs. Associated costs may also include third-party integration tools, such as data mapping tools. And finally, Purpose Area 3 would cover other implementation costs that may be jurisdiction-specific implementation costs that can include specific customization. To receive funding under Purpose Area 3, applicants must detail how the proposed project will reduce the jurisdiction's long-term costs in registry operation and maintenance. Preference will be provided to applicants that demonstrate long-term solutions and cost-saving strategies and sustainability. Next, we'll talk about preparing an application. As we walk through the elements of an application package, we'll explain how each section will be evaluated or weighted by peer reviewers. Remember, the individuals evaluating your jurisdiction's application may not know much about your jurisdiction and will only get the information about your need, the importance of the project, and how likely the project is to succeed based on the information that you clearly and thoughtfully provide in the application. The first section of the application is the project narrative, which would start with the description of the issue. This is worth 10% of the overall score of the application. Please be sure to clearly state how the proposed activities are responsive to as yet unmet implementation requirements identified in the jurisdiction's most recent SORNA substantial implementation review, if there is one. In plain language, be sure to discuss the jurisdiction's status as it's related to substantial implementation of SORNA. The next section of the project narrative is the project design and implementation. This portion of the application is 40% of the overall score. 
the emphasis in this section should be how will the proposed project move the jurisdiction closer to substantial implementation of SORNA or serve to enhance or sustain ongoing SORNA activities and compliance? Specifically identify each SORNA requirement that will be implemented or enhanced as a result of this proposed project. Applicants must clearly describe goals and objectives be a specific, measurable, realistic, and time-limited based on the project of performance. The project narrative will also include a statement about capabilities and competencies. This is worth 25% of the overall score. In this section, you will describe the management structure and staffing of the project, defining the roles and responsibilities of key organizational or functional components and personnel, Discuss the relationship of the Sex Offender Registration Office in the jurisdiction. In the section, applicants will also want to describe the experience and capacity of both the subject matter experts working on the project, as well as the grants management staff that will help administer the grant. When staff members are known, please provide their resumes or biographies in the application. If these positions are new or not yet filled, the applicant can provide position descriptions. The project narrative should also discuss a plan to collect the required data. These are identified within the solicitation performance measures, and the awardee is responsible for collecting and reporting on this information at least twice each year. The next section of the project narrative is the budget detail worksheet and narrative. This is worth 10% of the overall score. Most importantly, I'll note that there is no match requirement for the AWA program. When applicants are preparing their budgets, I urge them to use the budget forms that are provided by OJP. This will ensure that the budget aligns with OJP budget categories and that the budget costs are broken out by year. Items included in the budget should easily correspond with the proposed goals, objectives, and deliverables of your application and the cost should be necessary and reasonable for SORNA project activities and maximize cost effectiveness. If you're including indirect cost in the budget, please attach an unexpired indirect cost rate agreement. The project narrative should also include a plan for SORNA sustainability. This is a new element in the scoring of the SORNA applications. In this section, you should discuss how the proposed project will reduce the jurisdiction's long-term costs in registry operation and maintenance, how the program will continue to operate beyond the grant award period, and if personnel costs are supported by grant funds, include how these positions will be maintained beyond the grant award period. Other required items under this grant application will be scored with a value of up to 5%. These include items like the project abstract, a project timeline, and those position descriptions and resumes. If applicable, MOUs, indirect cost agreements, and tribal resolutions are also required items. For counties applying under Purpose Area 2, a letter of support from the state registering agency is also one of the other required items. When including subawards and procurement contracts as projected costs for your project, please be sure to reference OJP resources regarding the subawards and procurement contracts. When possible, please identify the, the anticipated vendors or subawardees and know that if awarded, the applicant will have to confirm actual selected vendors for subawards or procurement contracts before any work will be able to begin. When attaching the elements of your application, please be sure to make use of the application checklist in the solicitation to make sure that you have all of the required documents. Use clear, descriptive file names for your attached documents. This is the way that our peer reviewers and the federal staff will be able to locate the elements of your application. Please also double check the profile under which you're submitting your application. Confirm the legal name, address, and the name of the authorized representative for your agency, the DUNS number, and all of those crucial elements of your profile. 
this information populates the standard form 424 and must match the legal name for your agency as registered with SAM.gov. Any items not included in the application package will delay processing if awarded and may delay access to funds post-award. Additional attachments specific to this solicitation include the position descriptions or resumes for key personnel, a timeline, current indirect cost agreement if applicable, a current tribal authorizing resolution if applicable, and documentation of anticipated benefit to the federally designated qualified opportunity zone if applicable. Generally allowable activities and costs under AWA include personnel, fringe benefits, and equipment. DOJ defines equipment as items with a per unit value over $5,000. And there's a number of examples of frequently purchased items under equipment. Supplies are also allowable. There's a number of items that are listed here. DOJ typically defines supplies as items with a per unit cost less than $5,000 and a life expectancy of less than three years. When proposing the purchase of IT equipment like computers, printers, and scanners, please limit those to SORNA staff only and limit to not more than every three years. For the first time, SMART is asking all applicants to include travel and lodging expenses for at least one person to travel to participate in SMART-sponsored training events or conferences in the future. It is expected that this meeting or conference would be for a minimum of three days and two nights and for at least one representative from the program. A maximum of three participants may be budgeted. All proposed travel costs must align with GSA travel guidelines. Here are other examples of allowable travel expenses. Additional costs and activities that may be allow allowable include subawards for other entities that are responsible for jur the jurisdiction SORNA-related activities, contracts for materials or professional services with justification. Any contracts or subawards must use established agency guidelines for competitive procurement processes. And you must follow the guidance in the DOJ Financial Guide for limits on sole source vendors and daily rates for consultants. Other generally allowable activities and costs include things like rental space, software, utilities, officer identification and visibility materials, and conference registration fees. Please note for county applicants under Purpose Area 2, you must provide justification for any proprietary software that is being proposed. The following items are unallowable activities and costs and should not be included in your proposed budget. These include construction, food and beverage, gift cards, prepaid cell phones and phone cards, stipends, gasoline for fuel, and vehicle insurance. All applications must be submitted through grants.gov. Please be sure to register with grants.gov several weeks in advance. Just in, this gives you opportunity to make sure that there's no issues with your profile and you'll have ease of application at the time of submission. Again, please use the solicitation checklist to verify that you have all required elements of the application and submit your full application package 70, 72 hours before the application due date. You can find all of the standard forms available on OJP's website. And again, please note our deadline. When you go on to grants.gov, you'll be searching for the AWA opportunity number under SMART-2019-14905. After that, be sure to select the correct competition ID for either Purpose Area 1, Purpose Area 2, or Purpose Area 3. On this slide is a list of resources and tools that are available to registration jurisdictions. SMART.gov is the SMART Office's official website and includes several tools to assist jurisdictions in their effort to implement SORNA, including a checklist and the other items listed here. 
The National Sex Offender Public Website, or nsopw.gov, is a public website that enables the public to simultaneously search all registration jurisdictions public registry websites. The SORNA Exchange Portal is a web-based tool that the Smart Office created. The portal facilitates various communications between registration jurisdictions, most notably notifications regarding sex offender relocation. The Sex Offender Registry Tool, or SORT, provides local registration agencies with their own specialized public sex offender registry website and can function as the state-level administrative registry system. The Sex Offender Management Assessment and Planning Initiative, or SOMAPI, is a large-scale project designed to assess the state of research and practice in sex offender management. If you have any questions, please reference the contact information in the solicitation, or for general questions, please contact the SMART Office at 202-514-4689, or ask SMART at usdoj.gov. Thank you.